queen Cleopatra VII is the Egyptian queen who ruled Egypt as a last descendant of her Macedonian Greek family from 51 till 30 BC. She stood out amongst the preceding six Cleopatras due to her amazing characteristics and the circumstances that existed in Egypt and in the Greek palace at her time. To understand clearly this part of the Egyptian history, we have to go back in time 300 years and watch Alexander the Great's advent to Egypt with his boats and troops and setting his foot on the Egyptian soil on what was to become later the city of Alexandria and the ruling base of the Greeks where the kings and queens lived bearing one title the Ptolemies. After the defeat of the king of Persia in Assos in 333 BC and to protect himself from the danger of the powerful Persian fleet in the Mediterranean, Alexander the Great initiated the invasion of all the marine ports in Syria and Palestine, then invaded Egypt, which fell without a fight when Mazalith the Persian Wali surrendered Memphis fortress with its garrison and safe. Alexander was actually welcomed by the Egyptians with joy as they regarded him the liberator from the cruel Persian rule. The Egyptian priests in Memphis acknowledged the Macedonian invader as a king over Egypt. Special rituals were performed in the temple of Kadbitah where Alexander presented offerings to him and other gods as he knew that nothing has upset the Egyptians like the killing of Ochos to the abyss bull and the disrespect which Cambys showed towards him. In fact, the respect which Alexander has shown towards the Egyptian gods and the offerings he presented were not fake ways to reach out to them. But that tendency was a real distinctive characteristic of that great leader. In the first middle of 331 BC, and after Alexander established the city of Alexandria, he headed towards Siwa. That visit wasn't only the most famous visit in the ancient history, but beyond doubt it was the main event that immortalized the name of Siwa Oasis in both the ancient and modern times. Since the 8th century BC, and even before that, Egypt was well known for the Greeks, as many of the writers wrote in the 6th and 5th and 4th centuries about Egypt and many of their celebrities who founded the principles of the Greek civilization bragged about teaching their students in Greece what was taught to them by the Egyptian priests. Since the 8th century BC, a Greek trade center was established in Nocrates in Western Delta and hence many Greek traders established good routes for trade with Egypt. On the other hand, Many Greek philosophers came to Egypt to study in the schools attached to the temples. Amongst them was Solon the Athenian, and Lindos, and Kipolos, and Phales, and Miletus, and the famous Pythagoras and Platon, who stayed in Egypt for a long time, and later worked on spreading the famosity of the Egyptian wisdom. By these communications, it became settled in the minds of the Greeks that Egypt is a cradle of philosophy and Sophism and music and sculpture and art in general. In the same time, Amun's temples spread in the Greek cities and in Athens, they celebrated the opening of a temple consecrated to Amun in 333 BC, which was less than two years of the visit of Alexander to the temple oracle of Siwa. The first Greek king who recognized the importance of winning the Egyptians by paying his utmost respect to their religions and even contributing in adding religious shrines to their temples was 
Alexander the Great himself. He realized the importance of one of the most powerful temples in Egypt, which is Luxor Temple, and relieved his figure on its walls, dressed as an Egyptian pharaoh, and presenting offerings to the god of the temple, Amon, in all his figures and his family. This act of intelligence and probable belief in religion was copied and repeated, but in a larger scale, by almost all the members of the Ptolemaic ruling family of Egypt. Later, Alexander was followed by his stepbrother, Philip Ardeus, who built a sanctuary in Karnak Temple. When Ptolemy I ruled Egypt, all the principal gods of Egypt were worshipped in their temples. Some of these temples needed restorations and additional constructions. The most important monumental locations where the Greeks, then the Romans, built constructions are in Dendera, Kaft, Kos, Shanur, El Midamod, Luxor, El Jebelain, Armand, El Tod, Esna, Edfo, Komambo, and Aswan. Philae Temple, that's dedicated to goddess Isis, witnessed the contribution of most of the Ptolemy kings. It was Ptolemy II, Philadelphus, who started building the Temple of Isis on Philae Island, that comprises 14 temples, and that was in 285 BC. After his death in 246 BC, Ptolemy IV, the fourth, the fifth, the 6th, the 7th, and the 11th, all shared with constructions on Bige Island, which was called later Philae by the Greeks. Edfo Temple is the most complete and most beautiful Egyptian temple, still having almost all its constructional elements, and full of an enormous number of scenes and texts, executed with a distinguished artistic style. It was Ptolemy III, in 237 BC, who started the new constructions over the original ancient Egyptian constructions of the temple. It was dedicated to Gadhur Behdet and his wife Gadis Hasur and their son Gadhur Sematawi. The temple was finished during the time of King Ptolemy IV in 212 BC. Then, but Ptolemy the Seventh and the Twelfth, and Roman Emperor Augustus, added to its construction. The whole process of building and reliefing the scenes and texts took almost 180 years. Komombo Temple's original name was Nubet, meaning gold, but was changed to Ombos by the Greeks when Ptolemy the Sixth and the Seventh and the Eleventh contributed in its construction over the ruins of the original temple. It's dedicated to two sets of triad families of gods, God Hurwer and God Sobek Ra. God Apollo, the Greek god, was worshipped here too. Here, the two Cleopatras who lived through the troubled times of ruling Egypt are represented. They are Cleopatra II and Cleopatra III. Here, the Greek Roman art is represented at its finest level when we see the details of the female and male bodies popping out and magnified, unlike the traditional ancient Egyptian art, but with similar features to the Egyptians. Esna Temple is another rebuilt temple by the Greek kings, and that was during the time of Ptolemy V or Abivans. As for the decoration of the temple, it was during the time of Ptolemy VI and Ptolemy VIII. The temple was finished after four centuries during the era of the Roman Emperor Decius by the middle of the third century. 
the gods worshipped here are God Hinnom, God Isnebu, and Nid, and Menhit, and God Shu, and God Estefnut, and the child God Heka. Queen Cleopatra the Seventh was almost 17 years old when she sat on the throne of Egypt in Alexandria in a Corrigian shared ruling with her brother and husband, Ptolemy the Thirteenth, who was few years younger than her. She had a lovable, intelligent character and spoke many languages like the Egyptian, the Greek, the Nubian, the Aramean, and the Syrian. The conspiracies and evilness of the men of the palace drove her to escape from Egypt at a time when a war happened between Caesar and Pompey in Rome, after which Pompey escaped to Egypt and was murdered by orders from Ptolemy XIII. Caesar followed Pompey to Alexandria and Cleopatra took the chance to return to Alexandria and meet Caesar to help her retrieving her throne. They fell in love and she gave birth to Caesarian. After the murder of Caesar in Rome, she declared her son a co-regent on the throne of Egypt. When Antonio came from Rome to Egypt in need of its fortune, he fell in love with Cleopatra and she gave birth to his twins, a girl named Cleopatra Cellini and a boy named Alexander Helios, meaning the moon and the sun. Cleopatra lived her entire short life in the city of Alexandria, which had thrived in 300 years since Dinocrates, the Greek engineer, planned the new city to replace the original Egyptian town due to its strategic location, which is called now Talibab Sidra in Karnu suburb. Alexander himself set the perimeter of the city and the place of its walls and the constructions in it and the number of temples to be built over its land. That happened in the 30th of January 331 BC. All the generations of the Ptolemaic family lived in Alpha Quarter, the first of the five quarters of the city of Alexandria. There are many monuments left by the Greeks in Alexandria, like the Serapion Temple and the Pharos, or Alexandria Minaret, which was replaced by Kite Bay Citadel after its demolish by an earthquake. Alexandria Library used to comprise 700,000 rare manuscripts and was a beam of sciences to the ancient world. It was built by Ptolemy I, but in 270 AD, Aurelian, the Roman Emperor, ordered the destruction of the royal suburb, of which the library was a part. Thus, it was burnt too. Scientists moved to the smaller library in the Serapion Temple. The tomb of Alexander the Great was situated in the Royal Cemetery and was visited by historians like Strabon and was called Sima, meaning the body. It seems that it was a visited shrine throughout the whole Greek Roman period, but now its location is lost. The year 32 BC was a doomsday for the Ptolemaic dynasty, for it was the year of the war between Octavius and Antonius, fighting the battle of Octium. In the battle, Octavius from Rome won, and Antonius retreated to Egypt, 
then killed himself after hearing falsely that Cleopatra committed suicide. Cleopatra naturally understood the importance of staying alive over the throne of Egypt, which she didn't intend to give up easily. But the wind blew through the opposite direction as Octavius entered Alexandria victoriously. He spared her life, but murdered her son Caesarion. When she learned of his intention to captive her and show her off in the streets of Rome, she decided to die dignified, being the Queen of Egypt. She visited the tomb of her beloved Antonius, then ordered a copra to be brought to her. There, in her palace, she laid with a cobra on her chest and started the journey to her final destiny. Queen Cleopatra VII lived quite an extraordinary life. It was her destiny to be challenged continuously by fate, starting from the time she married her younger brother, as a royal tradition, to keep the throne within the family, until the time Pompey seeked refuge in Egypt, and was followed by Caesar, which led to the war between Ptolemy XIII and Caesar, 48 BC, and the final occupation of the Romans to Egypt. Cleopatra's 38 years of life was a reflection of the Nile's water, sometimes serene and other times in turmoil, splashing all around. But drowning was not an option for her. It's only fair to say that Cleopatra VII stood alone with courage and pride against all the difficult challenges of her life, and thus she truly deserves to be called Cleopatra, the iconic queen of Egypt.